Hello and welcome to summary of all you need to know about the poem Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas. I'll explain the meaning related to the poem as it appears in part three of the Pearson Edexcel International GCSE Anthology. Now do bear in mind that in contrast to part one of the anthology which featured only non-fiction texts and part two which is a mix of fiction short stories and poems, part three of this anthology exclusively features poems alone. So in this video I'll highlight key language and literary devices used in the poem and you'll learn how to analyse it. So let's get started. Now I'll begin by reading through the first three stanzas of this poem and then I'll highlight important literary techniques that you need to be aware of. So let's begin. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. The wise men at the end know the dark is right. Because the words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright the frail jades might have danced in the green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Now the title of this poem is really powerful because essentially this poem deals with the topic of death and it's semi-autobiographical. So bear in mind contextually that Dylan's father was actually dying in 1952 when this poem was written. So this poem was actually written at a really specific time and a specific moment in Dylan Thomas's life. Now the reference to good night, this is a euphemism for death and in this poem the speaker is essentially saying that the person who is dying should actually fight death rather than surrender and give up to it. Now in terms of the entire poem it has a very particular rhyme scheme, it's a villanelle poem so it has line 19 lines in total and in stanzas 1 to 5 which are Tercet's three line poems it's an ABA rhyme scheme and then in the final stanza six, it's an A, B, B, A rhyme scheme. So as you can see in stanza one, it's A, B, A rhyme scheme. Stanza two is A, B, A. And as you can see also here, stanza three is A, B, A. Now, the first line of the first stanza, to not go gentle into that good night, it's an imperative sentence which repeats the title. So the speaker in this case is adamant that we should fight death rather than surrender to it. And again, the good night, not only is this a euphemism for death, it's also interestingly what we say to each other before sleeping. Now this is important to remember because contextually Dylan Thomas's father used to read him lots of Shakespeare plays before bed at night and this is what influenced his journey as a poet and into becoming a poet. Now in line two, old age should burn and rave at close of day. Now this is a metaphor that death can't be avoided but it should be challenged. Furthermore, the repetition of rage, rage in line three emphasizes that we should fight and rebel against death and the mention of the dying of the light. This is a metaphor for death, the departure of the life force. Now in stanza two, the reference to the wise men show that acceptance of death is actually a sign of wisdom. It's an inevitable part of our lives. However, we don't have to accept it passively. We can fight against it. Furthermore, wise men know that dark is right. This is just essentially stating that death is a normal part of life process. Again, in line six, the repetition of the title, do not go gentle into that good night, shows or rather is the speaker's way of stating that the desire for life should be fierce. Even if we should accept death as a part of life and this is a sign of wisdom, we still should have a very fierce desire for life. Now in the third stanza, there's the Caesura, good men, the last wave by, and this is showing the different types of people and how they deal with life. And the enchantment at the end of this line shows that the life force is really powerful. Furthermore, the reference to the good men, their frail deeds. Now this is a metaphor for life's fragility and the frail deeds might have danced in a green bay. Now what this is showing is that these good men could have done more in life and accomplished more and they're reflecting on this at the end of their life as they are sinking into death and they feel perhaps very sad and regretful of it. Once more, the repetition of rage, rage, this still shows that in spite of that, in spite of perhaps feeling very regretful, you should still fight for life. Moreover, rage, rage against the dying of the light. What this is showing is that it's important to face death with strength and power. So let's continue. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late, the grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men, near death, who see it with blinding sight, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay, rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height, curse, bless me, now with your fierce tears I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night, rage, rage against the dying of the light. 
Now, this final part of the poem is really powerful because again, it's showing the importance of fighting death and we ultimately learn that the speaker is Dylan Thomas speaking and addressing his father as he's dying. Now, as I mentioned, firstly, the rhyme scheme, as you can see in the fourth stanza is A, B, A. In the fifth stanza, it's A, B, A. And in the final sixth stanza, it's A, B, A, A. Now, in line 10, the, rep the repetition of men focuses on our attention on different types of men and how they deal with death. Furthermore, the reference to they caught and sang in the sun. The sibilance here emphasizes the fleeting moment of singing and enjoying life before it ends and it's very brief. Now, in line 11, they learned too late, they grieved it on its way. Now, these wild men are grieving because they realize they could have done more in life. Now, in the following stanza, there's a reference to the grave men, the serious men who contemplate their deaths quite solemnly. And once more, there's Caesura here, again, focusing our attention on these wise men. What do they do when they are faced with death? Then they see with blinding sight. Now, this shows that they experience usually an epiphany at the end of their lives. They realize their mortality has given them perfect clarity on what they should have done whilst they still had the chance during life. Now, in line 14, blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. The alliteration and simile here show that the epiphany that these grave men experience is that their lives could have been far more richer, far more powerful, but they're only realizing this too late. Now, in the final stanza, the speaker addresses directly their father. The second person pronoun you directly is Dylan Thomas's way of addressing his own father. And he then states my father. And then he states curse bless me. Now the oxymoron here shows his conflicting feelings towards his father's impending death. Death is both a blessing and a curse and a part of the life force. Now his father has fierce tears and his father's tears are really heart wrenching for us to read as we read through this poem. He then repeats the title, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, and he ends, Rage, Rage Against the Dying of the Light, and this ending is almost a refrain to fight death, even if you have to eventually succumb to it. Now, always remember contextually, Dylan Thomas's father was a grammar school teacher who never actually realised his dream of being a poet, so perhaps a sense of regret is reflected through Thomas contemplating the different men and how they take on death. However, also, there was a really terrible twist of fate. So Thomas wrote this in 1952 when he was contemplating his father's death. However, he unfortunately died a year later in 1953. So perhaps also this was somewhat foreshadowing Thomas's own death. So that's all. If you found this video useful, please do note that we have an in-depth extensive course covering all the texts and poems in parts one, two and three of the Edexcel International GCSE Anthology. So make sure you sign up for the course on for explanations on all the texts as well as model answers. But also do make sure you check out our website, which is www.firstreetutors.com. There you can find plenty of English revision worksheets, model answers and online courses covering all the major English syllabuses, including Edexcel, AQA and IGCSE. Thanks so much for watching.